this is God's house, and He is here today. He hears each song we sing and listens while we pray. Hi, everybody. It's Miss Beth coming to you from Faith Lutheran Church in Saginaw on Growing in Grace, our children's worship video. And today is the third, third Sunday in Advent. So when you look back behind at our Advent wreath, we've got one, two, three candles lit and one that's still waiting. Just like we're still waiting. It's not time for Christmas yet. Oh, but we're gonna hear a little bit more about the Christmas story coming to you from Pastor John this week. And we're gonna learn a song and have a wonderful time worshiping God together. Don't forget, it's also drive through communion this week. So if you can come and join us on Sunday, December 13th from noon to two, we'd love to see you at the church. All righty, I'm gonna turn things over to Pastor John and I'll be back in a bit. Hello friends, welcome back to our telling of the Christmas story, little bit by little bit. And if you'll remember, two weeks ago, we started with a compass, which I finally learned how to read properly. And it points to north, east, west, and south. And if you have a hard time remembering the points on a compass, think of how do you spell news? N E W S. And you have the four points of the compass. Pretty cool, huh? And we use the compass to put all the characters of the story of Jesus' birth in the places where they were when they started the story. Up in the north in the town of Nazareth is where Mary and Joseph lived when the story started. Way far away in the east is where the Magi, also known as the wise men, started out. In a field out in the west near Bethlehem was where the shepherds were watching their flock. And south in the town of Bethlehem there was a stable. Last week, Joseph and Mary traveled almost a hundred miles from Nazareth up in the north to Bethlehem way down south. And it was there that we left them last week in the stable waiting for something to happen. So over here in the west, where we left the shepherds quite a long time ago. They're out here in this field, watching their sheep in the middle of the night, minding their own business, when all of a sudden someone came and stood right before them. It was an angel. And this angel had a message. God's son has been born into the world, the one you will call Savior, Christ, and Lord. And I have a message for all of you. You're going to find this baby, but not in a, in a normal place. You're going to find this baby in a very unusual place. Not in a castle, not in a temple, not even in a house. You're going to find this new baby maybe in a cave or a stable or a barn. And you will not find this baby lying in a nice, soft, clean baby's bed. No you're going to find this baby laying in the feed box that the cows used to eat their hay. It's called a manger. Well, after the angel had delivered this message, the angel was joined by something called the heavenly host. This is one of my favorite parts of this whole story. Do you know what the word host means? Well, a host is normally somebody we think of as welcoming us into their home or to a party or something. But in the Bible, when you see the word host, it means army. The heavenly host is the army from heaven that God sent into this story. Now, this beautiful set did not include a heavenly host, so I had to make one. Here is that enormous army of angels that God sent to be part of this great story. And when they showed up, they had a message too. And... They're, well, actually, when they came, did they come to fight? No, this army did not come to fight. This army came from a, heaven with a message. And their message is glory to God and peace on earth. How cool is this? That an army shows up not to fight, but to bring an announcement, a message of peace. The peace that has come for everyone on earth because of the birth of Jesus. 
And as cool as this part of the story is, it's still not over. So we will continue to wait and practice patience and continue the story next time. Thank you, Pastor John, for telling us more of the story of Jesus being born. Yeah, Jesus was born as a little baby. That got me thinking about babies, so I brought a little friend along. This is my, my baby doll friend. And she's here to remind us how small babies are. Oh my goodness. Can you believe Jesus was this small? Can you believe you were this small when you were born? Can you believe I was this? Can you believe Pastor John, who's really, really tall, was this small? We were all little, tiny little babies when we came into this world. Now, we don't remember coming into the world. We don't remember being a baby. Our brains were a little too tiny for that, and that's okay. But we all came into the world that way, even Jesus, even Jesus. Now, if you have not been around a newborn, and maybe you have, maybe a younger brother or sister or cousin or friend or someone, even if you haven't been around a newborn and seen how really tiny they are, I bet if you ask mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or somebody else in your family, they will show you pictures of when you, you were a little baby. What a wonderful thing to do this week while we get ready and waiting for Jesus to be born. Oh my goodness, take a look at those pictures. Look at how tiny you were. Oh my goodness, and you know, and then you can think about Jesus being that tiny. And remember, he was born a long, 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 long time ago, long before there were hospitals and warm blankets and all that kind of things. He just had mom and dad to look after him, right? Mary and Joseph were his mom and dad. So when you look at those pictures, you can talk with your mom and dad about what it was like when you were born. And remember that God loves you enough to send Jesus to the world that way. It's all part of God's plan. It's pretty exciting. How are you doing with your waiting? We've got less than two weeks till it's Christmas. So I hope you've been getting ready and getting your hearts ready. We're going to talk a little bit more about what happened when Jesus was born when we learn our song in just a little bit. Until then, I'm going to turn things back over to Pastor John. Bye from both of us. There are so many signs I'd love to teach you that come out of this part of the Christmas story. But today we'll keep it to just three signs. The first one is angel. And to make the sign for angel, take open hands, tap your shoulders once, and then extend your arms out like wings. The word angel means someone who brings a message, someone who delivers a message. Now, sometimes the angels in the Bible are shown in pictures having wings, but you do not have to have wings to be a messenger, to be an angel. If you tell somebody else that God loves them, then you delivered a me message that makes you a messenger. That really makes you an angel. <clears throat> now, when that army from heaven, the heavenly host showed up, they had a message to deliver also. And that message contains two of the other signs that we're going to learn today. The first one is peace, and the second one is earth, because they said peace on earth. So the sign for peace, take two hands, like you're going to clap, but don't clap. Put them together once this way, and then turn them this way, and then smooth things out. So one, two, three, that's the sign for peace. One, two, three. The angel army brought peace, and then the other word is earth. Uh, to make the sign for earth, make a fist, and think of this as a globe. And what does your globe need to be useful? It needs the stand. So with your other hand, thumb and middle finger, hold on to the earth. If it was this way, you could see how the earth would turn in its holder. But you just hold your hand like this, and put your other hand on top of it, maybe wiggle a little bit. That's the sign for earth. So the angel that talked to the shepherds was suddenly joined by the heavenly host who announced peace on earth. 
and peace on earth. That is an important message then, and it's the gift the world needs right now. All right, are you ready to worship God with our song? Oh, I am, and today we're gonna sing one of those, those carols that people love to sing. It's called Away in a Manger. It's one that adults think that kids all know, but unless an adult teaches you, how do you know it? So if you know it, great. If not, I'm going to teach it to you. Away in a manger. Remember what a manger is when Pastor John was talking about it? It's the place where they would put the food for the animals, and it was shaped kind of like this, so maybe Jesus could sleep in it, and since he didn't have a cradle or a crib, that was a good spot to put him where they were. All right? So... It's, the words are away in a manger, and you'll make the manger with your hands, no crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Actually, we'll do that for little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Then we say, now we go to the second part, all right? And we're going to go to the cows, cattle. There's another word for cows. The cattle are lowing, which is like mooing. They're making noise, which, of course, means the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes, so he doesn't cry. I love you, Lord Jesus. Look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. That means at the end, we're talking to Jesus ourselves and saying, Jesus, will you stay with me now? That would be wonderful. Stay with me through the night by my bed, even if we don't sleep in a cradle, until morning is nigh, which is a fancy word that says almost here. <laughs> so we just want Jesus to stay with us through the night. All right. So those are the two parts that we're going to do. I'll help you through them. We'll do the motions and whatever else that we do. And we're going to worship God with our voices as we tell the story. <gasps> so awesome. All right, you ready? Let's get the music started and we'll praise God. Here we go. See you next time. As always, before we say goodbye for this week, we're going to take time to pray together. So repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. With your love, help us share the message of the angels. Peace on earth. In Jesus, name, In Jesus' name, amen. All right, until next time, I hope you stay safe and well. God bless you. Bye. Mm -hmm.